Yes, and those troubled UK operations, why not just cut and run? Obviously, $300 million restructure. Is it they're, they're afraid they can't get the price uh, that they'd after in this type of an environment? Well, the market's hopes were that they would sell off their UK operations or at least run them down. We've seen a partial rundown of their UK operations. But as you mentioned, James, it's a hard environment to be selling banking assets into, especially UK assets. So it does look like they've worked on a compromise there. However, ha having a look at possible share price appreciation, and sometimes it's not the best quality bank that outperforms, but the biggest turnaround story. So in terms of a potential for a turnaround, NAB's certainly up there at the top for a potential turnaround. And possible appreciation in terms of share price. Of course, the thing that's underpinning NAB's share price at the moment is that a big dividend yield and that 90 cent dividend that's announced should lend some uh, support to NAB shares and it should uh, it should help NAB to outperform its peers, especially seeing that ANZ is going to be trading ex-dividend today. But with those banking stocks, really, they are a high yield play at the moment, especially in the face of falling interest rates here in Australia. So that 90 cent dividend, a positive for NAB. It's still got to work through its UK uh, operations and its assets, but it's taken some of the first few steps there. And look, Julia, also some news out, obviously, in regards to AMP. The net outflows continue. We're seeing earlier on, though, some strength in that AMP uh, price at the moment. Some of this market-related business is still struggling with outflows, and that's understandable given that investors still remain jittery. So if we have a look at financial services, we did see first quarter net outflow of $292 million. That was a little bit less than what we saw in the fourth quarter, which was a net outflow of $331 million. And we also saw the wealth management division with an outflow of $138 million. But if we have a look at their flexible super product, it's one of the lowest priced super products on the market, still seeing some strong inflows there. And I guess looking at AMP as a company and as a stock, this is a year uh, that some of the synergies from its acquisition of AXA really start to kick in. So that's a positive for AMP. And the other thing that we don't focus too much on is AMP Bank, which is a real credible alternative to the, those big four banks and growing quite strongly there. So AMP, I guess uh, this year is going to be a difficult one given market conditions, but some of the positives in its favour are uh, AMP Bank, which is growing quite strongly, and also the synergy is coming through from past acquisitions. And I think AMP shares starting off the session with a rise of 1.1%. I mean, do you put it in one of the, in the categories of stocks that are going to benefit on our own market from that weaker Australian dollar? I mean, it's 100.5 or so US cents at the moment. We have seen that through the last few sessions, and News Corp has been a winner while the market's been falling. And part of that has been the currency impact. News Corporation makes a lot of its revenue offshore, and that falling Aussie dollar, good news for earnings. But the fact that it's gone out and doubled that buyback from $5 billion to $10 billion, also good news for shareholders. And that's because it's not pursuing that takeover of B Sky B over uh, in the UK. So altogether, a bigger buyback for shareholders should be uh, good news for earning the earnings per share number going forward and that falling Australian dollar also a positive impact on News Corp shares. And Julia, talk me through Mirabella Nickel. It was a disastrous day coming back online, stock off by about 30% at the close. W was it overdone? I mean, do you see some potential buying opportunities in the stock? It's very hard when you see a stock like Mirabilla Nickel. It's been having production problems at its Santa Rita project in Brazil. And then add into the falling uh, price that we've seen in nickel prices. Now, usually when you see a fall in commodity prices, you also see a fall in cash costs. But that's not the case in the case of Mirabilla Nickel. Because of these big miners with big projects around the world, cash costs are actually rising. Now, Mirabilla Nickel shares did fall by 30% today. And that suggests that the market had been pricing in some sort of probability of voluntary administration they've come out this morning with that um, with uh, with an uh, with the query from the ASX around its share price, uh, reiterating its four-year guidance of between 19 to 21,000 uh, pounds of nickel in concentrate, saying that cash, cash costs will rise to about $6 per pound by the end of 2012. And part of the problem is that fall that we've seen in nickel prices. If we have a look at nickel prices, this is over the last year, this is what pricing looks like. And really, we've seen a fall from about $12 per pound down to $8 per pound. In conjunction with the rise in cash costs, the debt that the company has, I guess the market does have concerns 
around this uh, company. Really what it needs is a cash injection coming through from one of its investors, possibly a uh, partial sale of its Santa Rita project, either that or a rise in nickel prices, which we're not seeing at the moment. So Miraville and Nickel shares are fighting back today, given that huge fall that we, set, uh, that we saw yesterday. But it is one that we'll be monitoring very closely because, of course, in the last month, we've seen Kagara Zinc going into administration. Once again, the, the, falling, uh, the falling commodity price in conjunction with a lot of debt as well as rising production costs. Bad news for some of these smaller miners. Down miners BHP and Rio. Rio at the moment up about seven tenths of a percent. Is now a time to start moving in after you know the likes of it and BHP have been beaten down. Particularly if you agree with uh, with the Rio boss and Rio CEO that the outlook is a little bit better than it was previously. There are some quite bullish comments coming through from Rio Tinto saying that, that while China is seeing slowing growth, that demand still remains quite strong. And if that's the case and remains the case, that will be a positive for our big miners like BHP and Rio. We've seen BHP manage to hold its $34 support level quite aggressively over the last few months. So that's a positive for the stock. But of course, today is going to be a big day for the miners. And that's because we get the China trade uh, numbers out. And really what the market's going to be watching is whether China's demand for our uh, imports has held up and that would be good news for our miners but all up we have seen concerns around global growth really weighing on commodity prices and if that continues that bodes more weakness for our miners for the time being it does look like a positive performance and a positive performance by the Aussie market